Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kende Wandu, is a chartered arbitrator from the UK. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so let's start this morning with the punch. And the punch leads with tankers besiege depots as petrol shortage worsens. The riders here says independent outlets sell 950 naira per liter as black market hits 1,400 naira per liter. Another says many fuel trucks yet to load. NNPC not supplying enough petrol yet. And that is by Ipman. Now, on other papers as well, we still have this same headlines. It says, on the nation, it says, petrol scarcity brings back queues to Lagos, Abuja, and cities. Um, so that's what we're seeing on, on most papers, talking about the, the scarcity, the queues, and um, NNPC is not supplying enough petrol, even though I think it was yesterday, they were saying something else, that is the distributors, there was some sort of blame game. But for a nation that, is so blessed with this natural resources why are we still suffering and it's now it's, it seems more rampant it seems more frequent than it used to be every other week or two weeks you're hearing that the scarcity again everybody has to scour looking for petrol for a nation that is so blessed why are we still here and what should the federal government be doing better well that's a big question why are we suffering in the midst of plenty. Mm. Uh, I remember in my secondary school days, uh, one of the literature, I can't remember how, uh, that particular poem. Um, it's water here, water there, not to drink. Mm. And um, that seems to be the, the situation with Nigeria. And it's even more uh, much intriguing. Uh, on, a, on a day when the NFPC came out to realize that uh, he has made over close to three, two, two, three trillion naira uh, profit in the last uh, one year or thereabout. But um, this is uh, this is no longer news. That is what we wrote. Um, a country that uh, produces uh, crude oil and uh, finding it difficult to provide the basic necessity of petroleum um, to its people, and um, that brings us back to what we have been saying time and time again over you know, five years on the need for us to have uh, working refineries, uh, NMPCL as it is, economics as it is. Since last year, through the GMB of uh, that corporation, I'm promising that the various refineries, especially the one in Port Harcourt, will come on stream. Uh, now that uh, production has been stalled, uh, has been postponed for, um, for the sixth time, I think, even before then, if you go to social media, you know, they always say that social media doesn't lie. Um, if you go back to the social media, you will see this same GMD of NFPC here. Some years back, promising former president, Muhammad Buhari, that the refineries were going to work, that it's going to yeah. give you that. Even he gave a timeline. I'm sure you saw you see that video. Yeah. He gave a timeline to the uh, former uh, president, Buhari, during his time. And that's when, that when, that refinery, those refinery will come. And he said it was going to promise that it's not. And nothing happened. And we keep on recycling. When you don't punish bad behavior, what do you get? And we still have somebody there that made promises years back that this is what. If you give somebody a job and you give him a job portfolio and give him a mandate, he cannot deliver. Then the question is, why do you retain? And I continue to ask, why do we have somebody like uh, the Kyrie as the GMD of? Uh, of NNPCL, if he cannot deliver on six promises. And we have paid, uh, we spent billions and billions of, um, and even trillions of Naira uh, in trying to turn around um, most of these uh, refineries, and not, not a single drop uh, had come out. And to even make it worse, the one that the, uh, the private uh, refinery, the Dangote refinery that's supposed to come on stream, they are also trying to frustrate because to, um, to be able to produce, because certain people don't want production of petroleum, uh, petroleum in Nigeria. So those, that is how we roll. And um, you see the queue has come back. They will always give you reasons. They will tell you it's logistics. Oh, the ship have not been. There is nothing they have not told that. All they continue doing is repeating what Nigerians have, uh, have wants. is petroleum product. 
And don't forget last year, we were told by this government, by the president, the subsidy is gone. Subsidy is gone. That was what we were told. And because of that, they increased the price of petroleum by over 300%, or there about. But here we are. We have learned that subsidy has been paid, it's been paid on a daily basis that close to about 770 billion naira is being used on a monthly basis to subsidize the uh, petroleum products. But we don't have it. They also gave us the reason, and oh, the reason why we think we are going to remove the subsidy is because that the petroleum product is very cheap in our neighboring countries, that they are moving the products out. Once it is increased, um, it will be difficult for, for them to be able to buy those products. And that, there is no level of excuses that have not been given. But I don't blame anybody. I put this bill squarely on the table of the president of the federal government. Yeah, but now we hear, we hear that NNPCL has been asked by the presidency to channel some funds that they have made as profit into uh, subsidy, which means he, the presidency has, has uh, attested to the fact that there is subsidy. So I, I don't even know. So they made money that was supposed to come into the federal government coffers and the president is graciously saying that they should put it back into subsidy, federal subsidy. Go check some of the headlines. Some of the past today. The government also denied that there is payment of subsidy. Go and check some of the headlines. Yes, they're, so, they're but, denying. But, but, but isn't yeah. that obvious? On the one hand, they've denied. They're on um, the other hand, they're saying... Yeah, yeah and besides that, they're that they're even... They're speaking for both sides of their mouth. Yeah. They're speaking for both sides of their mouth. And isn't That's that even obvious? Because, I mean, if we're looking at the exchange rates, as of right now, they've not started selling in Naira. So if we're looking at the exchange rate of getting this product in, it fluctuates. So how come... Landing cost is more than 1,000 yeah, Naira. So yeah, so how come, how come it's still the same price? Well, except now that, um, you know, there's a little bit of scarcity. It's been the same price for a while. So isn't that a quasi-subsidy that obviously is being paid? I wonder. What I've said this, and I've told you, and I stated it in the course of the program that we have been told, and that has not been denied, that over 770 billion is being used to subsidize um, uh, petroleum Petrol. products on a monthly basis. Someone like um, uh, Erufai came out to say that, and so many other people have come to say uh, to say same. So I am saying that this is just like uh, the ostrich that buried his head in the sand and leave all his body exposed and thinking that it's died. There's something that this government is not, and that is what they are doing, and that is telling Nigerians lies. You cannot continue building. Now we are, we are told when the subsidy was removed that market forces, you remember that word, yeah. market forces. Market forces is going to be you. The market forces will determine the price of um, petroleum products. Oh, that the government had deregulated the industry and market forces. With it. Market forces means that if the prices goes up, uh, across but it will come will go up here if it comes down it's supposed to come down there have not been a shift in over one year now they face the price if you're going to be market forces, you're not going to face the price you just allow it but they face the price for nmpc and other uh, uh independent marketers but for me what is even more important even despite the fact that nigerians are ready to pay where is the petrol despite the fact that we have increased the prices of petroleum from um, I don't know what it was, about 200 or something before to about 700. Now Nigerians are buying petroleum at over 1,000 naira per liter. And you know the economic effect on this, not only on individuals, but also um, industries in Nigeria, because it will also affect manufacturers. It's going to affect the SMEs. That is why you've seen the SMEs dying and closing down on a basis. The background of every economy across the globe is the SMEs and the way they cannot have them, that is the end. So we are neither here nor there, and nobody seems to be telling us anything. And just put to that, maybe we'll get to that. But if we're not, uh, we come to realize that we have been told to be patient, patient, patient. Nigerians have been complaining, we have been told to be patient. But our president is not patient. The president is not patient enough. He has acquired his, you see, I hope you've seen the latest beast of the president that looks like that of the president of the United States of America. The first time I'm seeing Nigerian president using such uh, such vehicle. That was, of course, was, yeah. Then yesterday, the president rode in his brand new uh, Airbus 330 yeah. to France. And they are asking us to be patient. 
Why is it that the president is not even patient as well? <laughs> no, they so say, they say that one will save us money. That's what the, yeah. one of the aides said, that he was getting a new jet means that Nigeria will save a lot of money. I, I don't know where he got that reasoning yeah, but from. It's not, but it's, today they're telling you that you've forgotten that even your senators told you that they put 160 million naira um, uh, because the rules are bad. So it will save them. My brother. Oh, God. It is Okay, um, NLC and others are kicking against, uh, they are protesting as police probe a gyro uh, for terrorism financing. It's on all the newspapers uh, uh, talking about uh, the NLC president. He's being quizzed uh, over terrorism financing. Some are saying it's misplaced priorities. Some are saying that uh, it is just a hoodwink so that we will not be thinking about others. I don't know what you feel. A gyro now has been fingered as the person who is financing terrorism. What do you have to say? Uh, we have to put it in context. As a law graduate, he has been put in context. First and foremost, he has been invited. So it's not like he has been quizzed. He has been invited by the police. Second one, the police has the right uh, by the provision of the Nigerian constitution to invite anybody uh, as it were. Uh, if there's uh, any reason to invite anybody, any Nigeria on issues bordering on security, that is where it ends. But the way and manner you invite is also very, very fundamental. And that is why uh, the police is on spot um, this morning, as it were. First and foremost, when I read the test of that uh, invitation, and I just, I, I marveled, I said, will Nigerian police ever change? Our Nigerian police still believe that we're in military era, where they just do anything and just say anything they like. With them. We are in a democratic event. If I have left the invitation to the first paragraph of the, uh, of their letter of invitation. I'm okay with it. But the last, uh, the third paragraph said, in the case that you don't appear before, um, we, did they say that we declare you wanted or do this? And I ask, where in the world is that? You invited somebody. You are now also threatening that he does not. Did they say he's not coming? That is a, then the, the fourth issue is that this is the Nigerian police that invariably invaded this and um, the the um, NLC building in Abuja, they didn't even come out to say that they were doing the embedded. It immediately that that story broke. All figures were pointed at the DSS that it was the DSS that um, invaded this. No, it was not on that part. Before I was that the DSS, DSS came out to say we are not involved, but it's not us. We are not the one we didn't go to we didn't go to um, NLC um, um, building to do any search and. It was there that the police now came out, okay, yes, we actually went there. Uh, uh, it was because we are looking for one man, um, a foreigner, um, that has a shop, and giving all necessary or necessary excuses and rest of them. And, uh, and the NLC said, this is unacceptable. We want an apology from the police. The police now turned around and said, now we are inviting the NLC president. Uh, he's being investigated for terrorism. Let me state this. This country belongs to each and every one of us. The NSC is an integral part of Nigeria. I'm not looking at the person now, I'm looking at the institution of the NLC. I remember that they are talking about backup. I remember that when this protest was to start, NIC came out with a statement that they are not part of the protest. I read that. Mm -hmm. But when arrests were made, NSC also said that please make sure that those that were arrested are also given um, the necessary opportunity to defend themselves and so they can part of the higher handedness of the police. I hope that the police, what I should have been uh, waiting today to hear is that the person that the police said they were looking for at the NFC building, have they arrested the person? <laughs> have you seen the name of the person published anywhere? Because they're supposed to publish the name. They so arrested they the documents. So that uh, sorry? They arrested documents. That, that's what I'm saying now. They would have published it. So that name of the person published the uh, photograph. So that even if they cannot find it, we as citizens can also help look for the person and apprehend the person and give it uh, hand over to police. They have not done that. All they said that they got a uh, document and the rest of them. We cannot continue behaving like this. This is the Nigerian police. It is not the police of president or it's not the president the police of president of Republic of Nigeria or the president of APC or any particular party. This is the Nigerian police. If there is, and that I continue to say, it is their right to be able to. Uh, make him uh, have investigation, make investigation, <clears throat> arrest, prosecute, and rest of them. But when you continue to sh continue to pursue shadow the way they are going about it, then it's also leave that trust deficit. 
between the citizens and also the security agencies. And when there is a kind of mis um, a mistrust between, the, there's that link, you break that link, then it becomes a problem. I personally would have thought that by today, the police should be telling us what they are doing to rescue the 20 medical students that have been, that have been abducted and are in the bush. And other abductees and so many other um, 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 terrorism or whatever, abduction, um, kidnapping and rest of them going on. But you are not doing it and you are just pursuing what some of us are perceived to be personal vindictive. And what are we talking about? So at the end of it, if they continue on this route, tomorrow now NLC now decides to go on strike. It will now cripple the economic, uh, economy of the country. And we start running around and we start begging the president, we start calling them and begging them. Now that the police seems to be doing the wrong thing, the president says as it were, which because police is part of the executive, the president is not calling them to order, to, uh, to, uh, to pay them down. They are not saying anything. And I want to also believe that it may be a sub to, I don't think the police can just do what they are doing without getting kind of clearance from certain quarters at a higher level. Is it that also the president or executive are part of this arrangement? I think they should be very, very careful. They should be very, very careful. This is the democracy that all of us fought for. Nobody should try to do anything to truncate it in whatever form or for whatever reason. And I repeat, it is called the Nigerian police force. It is not the police of any single individual and should not be used yes. to be seen, to be pursuing personal agenda. But the NSC president, as I said, should attend to go to the police and also explain himself. I'm sure that at the end of the investigation, definitely, if it is not one one thing, then he will be let go. But the way our manager is going, there's a lot of trust between the security agencies, especially the Nigerian police and the Nigerian people now. And that, to me, is very difficult. Mm -hmm. All right, let's check The Guardian and let's talk about education. So on The Guardian, there's a headline here that says, ASU issues 21-day strike notice of, uh, over unmet demands. Um, and I think this was from 2009 that they had the agreement. And 15 years later, which is 2024, um, the federal government has still not uh, decided to go with the agreement. So now ASU is issuing a 21-day strike. Yamgula and I were just talking on off the press and we're saying how important education is to any any country because at the end of the day that is what you're being judged by the quality of the citizens and here we're seeing the federal government not really prioritizing it why is there an agreement and for 15 years they are not you know fulfilling it and now ASU is on the verge of going on strike, which would definitely affect the students because if they don't, if, they, if this, the schools are not running, the students definitely have to be at home. And we're seeing this time and time again. People that have to graduate in four or five years, they sometimes they wait seven, eight years. Why is the federal government not prioritizing education in Nigeria? I think on the issue of us, both of you discuss it effectively. I was, I was watching you. Okay. And, um, I don't think there's anything to add to that. You've said mm -hmm. it all. Uh, except for our viewers that didn't do it, like you uh, guys discuss it. it you uh, effectively discuss it. But just to ask uh, uh, my boys, the fact is that what we are having is also what is called contractual uh, uh, disagreement, uh, a breach of contract uh, yeah. in law. Uh, in law, uh, as a graduate of I know that's, that's what we call valid contract. A valid contract is a contract that is signed, sealed, and delivered. And what is, once that is done, then it is binding on all parties. So if there was an agreement that was reached with us, which was signed, then the, the federal government has like, must abide by it. And you say that government is a continuum. So uh, even if you are not part of you are in this sign that agreement, once you take over government, you don't take over, you don't, when you take over a company, you don't take over only the asset. You also take up the liabilities at least, if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. You take up, yes, you take up the assets and liabilities. And we have the patience for breaching contracts, which is why the reason where we are today, why two of our jets, presidential jets, have been seized in, uh, in uh, what is it, in Paris, in France. Right. Because there was a breach of agreement in, in a contract that was signed between state government and the Chinese firm. So this uh, out for breaching contract is a, 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 an issue. And I know that time and time again, ASU and government have met on these issues and they've agreed to resolve it. There was a time that ASU was on strike for close to one year and the students were at home. 
You remember that vividly some yeah. year at least about a year or two ago. Yeah. Now if there's an agreement you have reached, and the, mm -hmm. the federal government has said that they were going to um, be able to uh, make sure that that agreement is reached, and then they suppose we instead of us spending on federal uh, on federal issues that of not of, of no consequences, what we need to do is be able to be able to any country. I remember that uh, I think he was him that was saying. I was talking about Japan and other countries, even India. A lot of these countries invest so much in education. Education is priority. It's simple to some countries, number one, over and above every other thing. You know, you can talk of food security, and, but if you don't, if, if you are not able to educate your people enough, then you are not into problem. So, but here, we take it with just leaving it and to make it worse, most of these so called leaders, what they do is that to send their children abroad. They actually, most of their children are not here. Mm -hmm. They are not in Nigeria. That's true. They don't even bother. They send them to the UK. They send them to the US. They send them to Canada and other places to, for, to, uh, for education. And after they, they graduated, they bring them back here to Lord over the U. That's why you see them. That's, they put them in NNPC, put them in NCC, put them in all those juicy uh, ministries and past status. Then, and that's what we But you taking it, you're taking it down. You saw what happened in uh, say talking about education, not about tertiary now. Yeah. I'm talking of the, I'm talking about the primary education. You saw what happened in the north mm -hmm. during the protests and the number of out of school children on the streets of the north and how they were moving in their thousands. And I continue to say that we are sitting on a time bomb, a time bomb that when it explodes, it will splash on everybody. The leaders of the north seems practically not to be doing anything about out of school children. The Amajiri system in the in the north has makes it practically possible for children to just be roaming about the streets without going to school. And the leaders continue to use these children because they continue to suppress them because they believe and know that when they are well educated, they will be able to think for themselves. Yeah. But yes, but they continue to they rather give them fishes rather than teach them how to fish. Good enough, the governor of um, Bono State and that of Nasarawa last came out to warn leaders of the North that what happened during the end bad government protests in, 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 in the North is a clear example of what is happening in the North, warning them that if measures is not taken, then sooner than later, something is going to give. And he, who sat right at the back of the tiger, most of them are not, ends up in the stomach. So they have to be careful. Let us put priority to education, whatever agreement that government has agreed with us to. Let them make sure that they fulfill it to the death. They have 21 days. They will not call them to meet it now. When the 21 days um, expire, that's what the well, normally, government normally, the 21 days will expire. They will start on, they will start a strike. Then you see them, the, the National Assembly, the Senate will start calling NASU. That's our representative will start calling NASU. President will start calling NASU. Uh, come, let's come for a meeting. Now that they've issued a 24, 21 day notice, nobody is saying anything. Everybody is keeping quiet. The Minister of Education has not said anything. The Minister of Labor has not said anything. This is an industrial action which has to be named in the board so as to stop this um, down road towards um, in our tertiary institution, especially and when you talk about tertiary institution, here we're talking about the um, state and federal universities. Okay, we've, we've seen the headlines uh, on one newspaper. It says that uh, the NACON boss has been fired in, amidst the controversy of the Hajj money, the 90 billion naira yeah. that was uh, stolen. And then we've seen on the Punch newspaper where the president is telling us, giving us reasons why he will not meddle into the affairs of the EFCC, the graft uh, agencies as they are carrying out their duties. He's firing and hiring some people uh, that he feels are corrupt, yet he's saying that he will not meddle into what the EFCC is saying. How does he fight this graft? So he will just fire and send you to see, uh, EFCC and not follow up to make sure that you are you get the justice or otherwise that you deserve. Will that work? But let me even take it from this point. I want to notice that close to 60 to 70 percent of the statement always issued by the spokesperson of the president, um, uh, Ajuri Ingelali, has to do with appointment. Whenever I see any, uh, any, um, <laughs> any person, <laughs> I'm sure you are, you are aware of that. People have not taken the cognizance of that. I've done that. Over 60 to 70 percent of the statement issued by his spokesperson is, oh, so so person have been appointed. Oh, so so person have been appointed. So so, so. You don't see any serious policy statement. 
The next one that will come is from Bayer, but Bayer and Anoka, you see, so it's mm -hmm. really abusing. <laughs> they don't give, you know, yeah, they don't give, they don't, and I've always talked about communication. Communication is key. Communication is fundamental. I, I have a TV program that runs every Friday, one of the national TV stations. It's called Inside Politics. And we discuss on issues. And my my girl last, last week was the former president of African Public Relations Association. Um, in the person of uh, Mr. Yomi Barrejo, so you might know him. And I invited him, and we need to we discuss the issue of communication because I'm also a member. I'm not just a, a, a chartered charter arbitrator of the UK. I'm also a member of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations. I've been a member for over 25 years. And we discuss the issue of communication. And we have come to find out that the problem we're having with this current government is communication. The government is not communicating enough. There's mm. a breach between mm. what is seen and how to be able to put Nigerians across. And that is a big problem. You even see the two spokespersons of president at times, crossing in, uh, you know, um, um, how do you do now, contradicting themselves on issues of what is everybody want to impress. But that is neither here nor here. On the issue of the NACO person that, uh, uh, that has been, that has been proven, and that will be it is not, it is not fundamental and worrisome that somebody was appointed to oversee Hajj. That is pilgrimage. You know what pilgrimage is all about? Yeah. Pilgrimage means that somebody is going to the Holy Land to go and perform it. For you to be with that land, that means that you must be like the, 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 the Caesar's wife. You must be a good boy. We are talking about something that has to do with religion. Where are you supposed to be some and something? And the person, rather than doing that, he has been from the money that has been given him to go to make to arrange it. The man has not been there for one year. He's not there for one year. And he's already there. How many billion? 90 billion. And it's at the point at which, and that's the question we have. Why all these questions? People like me question. Why the even government has to sponsor, put money in hatch? Is it not a private business? If I'm going to ask, it's between me and my God. What has government got to do? The 90 billion naira that the government has marked for that hatch. If they have put it in education, I don't think us will be going on a threatening to go on this strike. It's business where our parents. What has government got to do with the Hajj? What is the Hajj? <laughs> Hajj, I want to go and commune with my God. I want to go to Hajj, but I want to go to Jerusalem um, on a uh, Christian pilgrimage. What is government's business in that? Ask yourself. <laughs> Ask yourself. Why are we see that we are always more holier than the poor? When, I, when I'm going to visit Ogun Shrine, I'll go and collect passports <laughs> from <laughs> Amadi Oha. When I'm going to see Amadi Oha for thunder, I'll collect transport from the government. Oh, oh, I, I was, in my village, we have Amadi Oha and Chongo. Do you think that is everyone that was... Uh, uh, I'll go and get transport. <laughs> After all, it's another religion. Yes, it's religion. Yes. It's African it's traditional African. religion. Mm. Yes, I don't also market for that. If you want to go to my place, you don't go to God uh, worship my place. I don't also going to give me money to go on my own privilege. Uh, it's just sad that it, it seems like we're politicizing religion. Everything is being politicized. It's quite yeah, unfortunate. Everything. That everything. Is, everything. So those are the. That don't, I mean, those are the discussions, not even that this man is By the way, has all of it. What is government business? Yeah, has all of it. All right, we have to end this segment here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris, Thank for you. coming. It's always a pleasure talking to you on Tuesdays. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. <laughs> All right, so we're speaking with Chris Kende Wonder. He's a chartered deputy from the UK, and we've just been taking the global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. We'll go on a short break. When we return, we'll be discussing the IG su succession battle. Tension rises as Egberto Kun's fate hangs on Tinubu's decision. Please stay with us. <laughs>